Good morning, Lady Liberty Stacker here. It's Friday, April 5th, 2019. And what I'm going to show you this morning is how to cook an omelet or anything that requires nonstick cooking in a vintage cast iron skillet that has pitting. Yep, there is pitting. This is one of the first skillets that I purchased. Uh, that's Griswold. It's a number eight, which is about 10 inches across. Highly collectible because it's got the large block logo on it. It says cast iron skillet number eight, Erie PA. So it was made probably in the 40s, 1940s. It's a 704Z, so it was made a little bit later than some of the earlier ones. But uh, this is the first skillet, Griswold, that I came across, and I had to have it. And I was only collecting for three months, so um, I don't know if I would have purchased it with the pitting, but, you know, you, you do what you got to do. And I've stripped the pan, reseasoned it, probably been seasoned now four or five times and I go to prove that you can cook a complicated uh, dish like an, a vegetable omelet with all the fixings in a pitted pat, cast iron pan otherwise good it sits flat no wobble but it will not stick if you do it right you got to heat it up long enough and you have to add enough butter or oil uh, to get that non-stick surface in any cast iron you really need to do that I don't care how smooth it is. So anyway, it puts that theory to rest. You can cook in pitted cast iron as long as the pitting isn't too bad. This one isn't too bad, and it's a great cooker. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good morning, guys. Lady Liberty Stacker here. This morning, I'm going to attempt to cook an omelet in this uh, number eight. And it's still heating up, so I can pick it up with my hand. Number eight, large block logo, Griswold skillet. And I bought this early in my collecting days. And it has, we can see the interior. It's got some pitting going on right there, a little bit over here, but mainly over here. My concern on this is that it will stick. And uh, so we're going to give it a test here with an omelet. I've used this pan for other things. I made a uh, chocolate uh, decadent dessert in here last for last Easter that was really, really good. And um, But at any rate, this is a good skillet. Um, I basically bought it for my own collection because I did not have a number eight Griswold, and this came in from a local antique mall. So I paid, you know, a fair market value for it. Uh, I don't have any intentions of selling this one, but if I find a better one down the line for my collection, I might. But this, you know, does not spin. It sits flat, very little to no wobble, and so it will heat evenly, and that's what collectors are concerned about. They're also concerned about pitting. So while this thing is heating up, we are going to, it actually should be hot enough by now, and when you start having heat in the handle, you can do that. So what I'm going to do is spray some avocado uh, nonstick cooking spray on the skillet. And I'm also going to take a little bit of butter, Land O'Lakes butter, and go ahead and put that in the skillet. Yeah, you can hear it sizzling. We're going to go ahead and move it all around, coat the pan. And what we're going to do first, I'm going to turn down the heat. This has been slowly heating up, but as you cook with cast iron during the process, it gets hotter and hotter because it retains heat. So you don't always have to keep it up. Right now I've got it at a, um, a little bit below medium. I wouldn't call it medium-low, but it is probably 75% there between low and medium. So anyway, I'm going to cook some onion. And I'm going to cook some green pepper I'm going to put in my omelet. And we're going to cook it. And what, what I'm going to do, this always seems to work quicker. And I am going to, I did find my lid. I use an old Revereware. And that will keep most of the, you know, the steam and everything in there. And that will cook your onions and peppers quicker. You can put anything really you want in the omelet. Well, that is cooking for a couple of minutes. Um, I have in chopped ham. This is nitrite-free ham from Hillshire Farm. And I've got Velveeta cheese slice, just uh, cut up, small. And 
Let's see what else we're going to put in here. We're going to put in a little barbecue sauce and put a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And of course, we want to put in a little bit of pepper. I got to get that out. I forgot to get that out. And uh, there we go. And then we're also going to uh, beat the eggs. And I actually want to put a little bit of egg beater, so I got to go grab that. Okay, so we're just going to crack the egg on the side of the counter. And we're going to go ahead and put them in our bowl here. Add a little bit of egg beater. I want a little bit of, you know, a little bit of egg beater. I don't like to make them with all egg beaters because the fat in the eggs helps prevent non-stick. We're going to beat it up really, really well here. And we're also going to put in some pepper. Beat that in. Keep that well dispersed. And we're just going to let this cook. We're going to check to see how it's doing. Now this is great. It steams it cooks it, softens it up, and you just want to do this for about maybe two or three minutes. And the skillet is very, very much warmed up right now. And I have it at a, uh, it's hard to see it, but that's medium right there. That is where I have the skillet, or the burner now. You don't need it. On cast iron, you don't have to cook at medium heat. Many dishes can be prepared at three quarters of the way between low and medium. Want to make sure to get it all chopped up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in the ham. Get that going. And we're going to go ahead and just uh, I'll add a little fat to the dish. Browning it up really nicely here. Now, what I want to do is I want to add the egg. So I'm going to go ahead and spray again the pan. The secret to cast iron cooking is you want to make sure you have enough heat and enough fat or oil or what ha whatever you use. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and add our omelet, add the egg, the omelet, the eggs. go. Get it all in there. Okay. Now. Okay, we're spreading it all around. We're letting it set up. And then what we're going to do is just take the sides here and just let all the uncooked pieces or parts of the egg come down. Fill in the open spots and yeah boy does that look good okay now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put in the Velveeta cheese I use Velveeta cheese it's the healthiest you know sliced cheese you can get that melts easiest it's low fat and I like that and some people will beg to differ with me but I like the way Velveeta and then as a secondary, uh, American cheese will, um, you know, melt with eggs. So you don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle on some Parmesan cheese here. And we're going to go ahead and put a touch of barbecue sauce. You don't need to do this. Sometimes I put sour cream in my omelets too. That gives it a kick. It's going to drip it around. 
You don't want a ton of barbecue sauce. And some people like ketchup with their eggs. I'm not really a ketchup person. But anyway, I need to start my toast. So at any rate, it's ready to uh, flip. I'm going to make sure to get it from the sides. And it's uh, really spread out. Actually, I like to cook omelets in my number seven. It's actually the perfect size. But yeah, we're ready to... Uh... There we go, see? The pitting a little bit, but not too bad, really. So we're going to go ahead and turn that around. Whoops. I put a lot of stuff in here, so naturally it's a very loaded omelet. This will probably last me until dinner time. Gonna have some toast with it. And yeah, it is pretty good to much good to go. A little sloppy there. <laughs> but you know what? It's the taste that matters. So now we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. And we're gonna go ahead and slide it out. There it is. So you can cook in a pitted skillet and nothing is sticking. Just a little bit of scraps from the eggs. Look at that beautiful. It's a uh, pitted, slightly pitted skillet. And uh, the pitting is, oh, where is it? Actually, it's more or less over there, but yeah. Perfectly good omelet here, beautiful. And I'm gonna have some toast with it and some orange juice and it's bon appetit. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, give it a thumb up if you like to see more of this. I haven't made a cooking video in a while, so I figured I'd do it with my GoPro. You can see exactly what I'm doing and leave a comment or question below. Thanks for watching and go make it a great day.